Welcome to a new fantasy adventure on Dreamscape. This dark story takes you into a world full of witches, curses, and magic. The dreaded witch Sildra spreads fear and terror in the villages. But when a mysterious stranger appears, the story takes an unexpected turn. The biggest gesture you can give me is a like. If you like my stories, feel free to leave a subscription and activate the bell so you don't miss any more stories. Well then, let's dive into the story. Sildra, the Witch of the Moor The night lay heavy over the moor, as the witch Sildra flew on her broom over the misty land. The cold wind tugged at her black cloak and made her long hair flutter. The lights of a remote homestead appeared before her. With a mischievous grin, Sildra landed in front of the door. It was time for some fun. She knocked, and when the old farmer opened, she pushed past him wordlessly into the parlor. What do you want? He asked anxiously, backing away. Please spare us. But the witch only laughed. With a wave of her hand, she let the cauldron boil over the fire. I need only a little something for my potion, she said in a sepulchral voice. Your hair will do. The peasant shook his head pleadingly, but he was at the mercy of her dark power. Whimpering, Sildra plucked a strand of his hair and tossed it into the brew. Immediately it hissed and bubbled ominously in the cauldron. Be warned, the witch whispered. Do not resist me, or the curse of the moor will be upon you. Then she swept out of the door with her cloak flowing and disappeared into the night. Left behind was the trembling peasant. It was not so easy to get away from the witch Sildra. Over the next few weeks, the incidents in the area became more frequent. A crop withered overnight, a child mysteriously fell ill, a house burned down. Everyone knew that this was Sildra's work, but no one dared to oppose her. We should burn the witch, shouted the blacksmith in blind rage after his youngest son was hit by a curse. Quite a few villagers grimly agreed and made their way to Sildra's dwelling. She had torches and pitchforks with her. But the witch did not fear their wrath. When the mob reached her house, she stepped out into the open with glittering eyes. Don't you dare touch me! She hissed. Or the curse of the moor will strike you all! Intimidated, the villagers backed away. Nobody dared to be the first to attack Sildra. The latter, laughing derisively, retreated back into her house. Even this rabble could not harm her. But one in the village did not give up. The young hunter Finn had enough of Sildra's reign of terror. Bravely, he made his way alone to her dwelling. He carried a silver ball with him, which should have magic power. With it he would defeat the witch. In Sildra's house, Finn surprised her as she muttered dark curses while bent over a boiling cauldron. Quick as a flash, he threw the silver bullet at the witch. Hissing and smoking, it struck Sildra squarely in the chest. Screeching, the witch writhed on the ground, bound by the power of the silver. But she was not yet defeated. With her last strength, she managed to inflict a terrible curse on Finn, turning him into a twisted creature. Howling in pain, the hunter fled the house. Outside, he collapsed as his body deformed. Soon he resembled an animal more than a man. That was how Sildra's vengeance had struck him. But the witch herself was too weakened to cause any more mischief. The silver bullet had banished her dark power. And so, little by little, peace returned to the village on the moor. However, no one dared to enter Sildra's dwelling for fear of a final curse. The years passed, and the story of the witch Sildra was slowly forgotten. Only occasionally did someone around the campfire tell of her dark deeds and that her evil spirit still roamed the moor. Until one day a stranger came to the village. She introduced herself as the herbalist Mabella and requested permission to settle at the edge of the bog. The villagers suspiciously agreed. One night, however, some peasants saw a ghostly light in Mabella's hut. It reminded them of the fires that had once burned during Sildra's witchcraft rituals. 
they immediately became suspicious. She must be a witch like Sildra was then, they exclaimed excitedly. We can't let this happen. Armed with pitchforks, they moved to Mabella's hut. There the blacksmith wrenched open the door and froze. Mabella sat peacefully at her table and mixed a healing ointment. There was no threat coming from her. Forgive me, the blacksmith stammered. We thought you were, like Sildra. Mabala just smiled. Don't worry. I'm just a simple herbalist. Relieved, the peasants moved off again. They had learned from the past that one should not judge strangers hastily. And so Mabella could provide her healing service to the village undisturbed the opposite of the dreaded witch Sildra. Over the years, Mabella and the villagers became more and more friendly. Often they sat together in the evenings by the fire and the herb woman told old tales from distant lands. Especially the children hum on her lips when she recited exciting stories. Mabella knew many herbs and prepared healing poultices and potions for the sick and injured. Without her, life would be poorer in the small village. And yet there was something mysterious about Mabella. No one knew where she actually came from or what she had once done. Sometimes on moonlit nights, the villagers thought they saw strange lights or figures flitting around their hut. But no one spoke up. Until one day the farmer Hacken entered Mabella's hut because his little daughter was seriously ill. What he saw there took his breath away. Mabella was busy brewing a dark brew from moss, herbs and bones. Stunned, Hacken backed away. You! You are a witch like Sildra! He stammered. Mabala just sighed and smiled mildly. Yes, I am. But not an evil witch. Sometimes magic can heal where herbs fail. With that, she handed Hakan a potion for his daughter. Sure enough, the girl recovered overnight. From then on, the villagers saw Mabella with different eyes. She was different from them, but she did good with her powers. And that was what counted. The witch and the people had made peace.